Tonight's meeting underway here, uh, ZBA of uh, Thursday, January 15th. Uh, we have uh, first on the agenda tonight, case number 15-01. And I believe are those applicants here tonight? Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and read the legal notice, and uh, we'll go from there. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, January 15, 2015, at 7 p.m. on the petition of MBA Building Group, Alan Capanella, who seek a special permit under Section 6.3.8 of the Zoning Bylaws in order to construct a new single-family dwelling on a non-conforming lot located in an S-20 district on the property located at 92 Curtis Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, <coughs> North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. So anybody who's going to speak uh, or feel they'll speak on behalf of this case, uh, yeah, this is the 92 Curtis. Just stand and I'll give you the uh, oath. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. I do. I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, the floor is uh, yours. It looks like uh, Mr. Sullivan is going to give the presentation. Okay, thank you. For the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. I'm here with the owners of M MBA Building Group. <coughs> and we're here tonight for a special permit for 92 Curtis Street. Um, it's, it's a 20,232 square foot lot. Uh, there's 100.11 feet of frontage. Uh, this is in the S20 zoning district, so you're required to have 120 feet of frontage. Um, this lot is in conformance conforms to the S-20 zoning district in lot area, so the only thing we're short of is on frontage. There was an existing single-family home uh, that existed on this property. It has been demolished as of the date of this hearing. Um, but at, on the plot plan, you can see the location of where the existing home was. The applicants have proposed, uh, they've torn down the existing home. They're proposing to build a, a four-bedroom, um, four-bedroom story and a half new home with an attached two-car garage. Um, the, the new home will be conforming into all aspects of the zoning bylaw. It meets the side yard setbacks, it meets the front yard setbacks, it meets the rear yard setbacks. The proposed lot coverage for this house is 11.73%, uh, which is less than the 25% maximum that's allowed in this zoning district. And what we tried to do is we basically looked where the existing house location was and we tried to basically match onto the existing uh, location. It's in the same general location uh, with the two-car garage and we're basically gonna use the existing curb cut to this property as well. Um, what I should mention is this lot is conforming lot, but it's also one of the larger lots in this neighborhood. Um, the, the, the lot next door is basically about the same size. All the lots range from like 12,000 to 20,000 square feet in this neighborhood. The applicant is kind of caught in a little bit of a transitional area here. Um, at town meeting in November, this type of application, once the attorney general approves it, can be approved by Glenn. Um, 
but with that's the, the attorney general still hasn't ruled on if the town meeting vote will be allowed or not. We're assuming it will be, but just just to move forward with this process, we're going through the zoning board tonight. Um, we feel this house will fit in with the surrounding neighborhood. They made contact with the direct abutter at 96 Curtis Street. They have support of that abutter in this case. I'm not sure if they have a letter or not, but they did talk to the neighbor next door. Um, and I guess I'll open it up to any questions you might have on this project. Okay. I'm an abutter too. I never got any notification of anything. This is the first notification I've ever received. I'm 84 Curtis Street. Excuse me. Uh, you, you, first of all, you weren't sworn in, right? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I did not, I, number, I number, number, number two, I haven't opened it up to public comment yet. I will open it up to public comment. Okay. But we will take note that, you, you know, you have you say you weren't locate, uh, notified. I'll check. We'll check the list here and uh, and uh, see on now. Okay. What what is what was your address? And 84 name? Curtis Street. 94. 84. 84. I'm directly on the other side. On the other side of it, from 96, I think it was 98. Yeah. As whatever. you're looking at it, he's the abutter to the left hand side. Correct. Yeah, on the left hand side. Okay. But uh, you, you should have been certainly notified. And, well, <laughs> this is the first notice I've received. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, but we will open it up to public comment, and uh, if you have any questions or anything then then you can uh, ask that okay. at that point okay thank you uh, mr. Sullivan oh, are you all set I'm all set okay uh, Glenn do you have anything to add to this uh, you'd like to comment on no nope, it's a it's a typical tear down and re rebuild that does conform <clears throat> in all aspects to the current requirements provided we get the special permit for the non-conforming lot um, Jack is right uh, I believe the town clerk um, notified the attorney general on 12 9 mm -hmm. and, it, and it, he has to make a decision in, within 90 days yeah so by the time we go through all the appeal period and everything on this it's going to be about the same same time period okay thank you uh, uh, I'll, I'll have to say I was a bit surprised and I know Jack noted that the existing uh, or was existing the older dwelling on the lot has been demolished uh, right. you issued a, a demolition yes, permit on that we did yeah, yeah. At, at that point um, the contractor was contemplating building within the same footprint ah so the bylaw says that if you going to build within the same put, footprint you can demolish it and yes. rebuild on that and they, yeah. and they had second thoughts subsequently so now they're back changes the mind, yeah so yeah. we can't he can't build until we get the special permit or until the attorney general Sure. Approves. Sure. So they could have recent by one. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, and, and the builders realized they took a risk demolishing the building before this hearing, but as Glenn said, their their ideas changed as they went yeah, along. Yeah. <coughs> sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, David, uh, any questions, comments uh, on this particular? Uh, I don't. Case? I don't have. I don't have any. Okay. Seems fairly straightforward to me. <laughs> Kathleen. Same for me. It just Same for you, Mr. Jarima. Mm -hmm. I noticed that in the, uh, the, the rear of the, of the lot, it um, <coughs> drops off um, a fair amount. Um, it appears that um, from the certified plot plan that um, you're going to come to the edge of that. It looks like you're going to have to do some filling or something. Uh, not really, actually. If we're going to try to kind of keep the natural grades of the lot. Is that correct, Jack? That's that's correct. I mean, it'll be a little bit, but not. So yeah, it, looking at the it naturally drops now. Right, and looking at the architectural plans when I was reviewing those, it appears that you have a walkout basement in the back. We do. It might need uh, potentially there may need to be uh, a little you know, curve cut out for the door. Sure. And then you take one step up. Mm -hmm. So until we exactly yeah. it's close, it's almost right there. That. And then my other question would be to Glenn, uh, is this impacted any, in any way um, by Phil, uh, by bringing in Phil? Um, not for me directly. Before, um, before we can issue a foundation permit, uh, the curb cut has to be approved through engineering. So the engineering will ask them for a spot elevation of the driveway at the street and at the garage, so they'll know then if there's any excessive grading. 
Okay. And then my other question uh, would uh, revolve around the, the grade and the uh, eventual height of the of the, uh, the roof area. Um, this would be one of the. I mean, that plan, this new plan, we're about three feet lower. I changed the pitch of the roof from a 12 to a 10, so the ridge point went down about approximately three feet. Mm -hmm. So on the front elevation is 28 feet above grade. No. Right. Okay. So he's well below the 35. Yeah. No, I was just I was just wondering because the other homes in the area, either side of it, are the small capes, so it looks substantially larger than the rest of the. And you tried to give it the the, the illusion that it's a story and exactly. it's from the I front, that you're right. somewhat matching with the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to answer your question, John, the garage floor grade that I set, there'll be about a one percent pitch to the street, so water will drain to the street from the garage. Okay. We're going to utilize the existing curb cut, and I do have a note on the plan that we have to meet the DPW driveway standards. Um, but there'll be positive pitch. If it's not going to drain back towards yeah, the lot. It'll drain out to the okay. street. Those are my concerns. Okay, thank you, John. Sally, uh, any questions? I see this is very straightforward, and I don't have a single question to ask. Okay, thank you. Uh, my review of it, uh, we looked at uh, the the uh, the house has been demolished. It looks like that was built around 1930. I assume the lot was laid out at the same time as that, and obviously it predates zoning then. So this appears to be a legal non-conforming lot with the the 100 foot plus uh, frontage as opposed to uh, the 120 foot. So I'd call it a legal non-conforming lot uh, on that. And uh, let's see, yeah. And that, I noticed that too, John, which you were, the proposed dwelling, I was looking at that. It, uh, looking at it from the front, it uh, looks like it's about one and a half stories, I guess you would consider it mm -hmm. if you were looking at it at the front. There's dorm that's coming out of it. Uh, it's, it's similar to a, it looks like a Cape Cod style from the front with the dormers. And in that area, there was a number of Cape Cod style houses. Uh, so I, I kind of looked at that and thought that it uh, would fit into the neighborhood. It certainly doesn't appear to be substantially more detrimental no. than what, the existing that's structure. That's what I liked about uh, Yeah, I, I thought they did a good job with that, uh, right. trying to fit that in with the uh, uh, similar like a cape style mm -hmm. to the front of it. And obviously in the back, you go to the back because the land slopes yeah. away. Yeah. And the back does have the larger second floor right. to it. Uh, it's you know, much much larger from the back, mm -hmm. but from the front, it certainly looks like a cape. Uh, other than that, I, I don't have any issues with it. Uh, I will go ahead and open it up to public comment. Uh, at this time, if there's anybody from the public who would like to comment, uh, go ahead. Uh, this gentleman here before, it's your, now's your time. I just, I came to see it. Sure. I'm curious what was going to be built next Yeah. Morning. We, we, we checked the uh, town logs here uh, while we were talking. Mr. Jarema was uh, nice enough to do that. And certainly you were on the list to have received notice. Now, <laughs> that's all we can say. You know, it's certainly, I, they don't send them certified mail or anything like that to, you know, get any receipts back. But, uh, you know, they were sent out uh, on that. So uh, other than that, uh, if you had any further questions or you want to look at the plans or see what's going in there? Yeah, sure. No, go ahead and read it. If there's anybody else with comments, this would be a time to... No? Okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, can I just ask how he did hear about the meeting? Was it through the yeah, newspaper I, ad? No, I, re I received this hearing notice. I well, that's, this hearing notice. that's the notice. That's the notice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you got that in the mail, right? Yes. Yes, yes. That's what they okay. send the about it. Yeah. Yeah, you you don't get a, you know, a big set of plans or anything like that. No. Actually, the majority of um, people notified were individuals in the condos. In the back. I know it, yeah. It, uh, yeah, 
Make, make, it makes it a lot of letters when you have yeah. those yeah. new condos going yeah. in there, yes. Yeah. No, no further questions. Okay, if there's no further questions then from the public, I will close the public portion of this meeting. And uh, if anybody on the board has any questions, if not, I would entertain a motion at this time. I'll make a motion. Okay, David. Uh, I move that the uh, Board of Appeals approve the uh, petition in case 1501 uh, of MBA Building Group and Alan Carpanella to grant the special permit under it's technically 6381B mm. if we want to be technical about what section it is right. of the zoning bylaws in order to construct a new single family dwelling on a non-conforming lot located in an S20 district on the property located at 92 Curtis Street, Reading, Mass. As depicted on certified plot plan dated December 8th, 2014, and stamped by John D. Sullivan III, 22 Mount Vernon Road, Boxford, Mass. And as depicted further on elevation drawings, uh, unnumbered, but attached to the petition. Right. Did I not hear him, one of the gentlemen say that one of those yeah, has changed? Yeah. It's also depicted on elevation drawings, amended elevation drawings dated January 13th, 2015 by Donahue Design and Construction LLC and MBA Building Group LLC. Uh, pages one, two, three, four, five. Under the following conditions. One, the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Two, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And three, the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. So moved. Okay. Thank you, David. We have a second here from Mr. Dreamer. Is there any further comment? If not, uh, all those in favor of the motion, uh, raise your hand. Let the record go. A uh, special permit is granted. Vote of 500. And uh, we have 14 days to write up that decision, and we will submit that with the town clerk. And then there's a 20 day appeal period from any about us on that. Okay. So let me. Uh, Write up these that we uh, granted you a special permit on it, and I'll give you these for your copy, a copy for you, and uh, you can uh, be done. <laughs> be done with us, anyway. <laughs>
Okay, there is a set of the plans. Thank you. And if I could have a copy of the every plot plan too, sir? I do, I do, I do. Yeah, I would need that out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. That's... Uh, Bearing with us here while I get my paperwork done. notice and we will proceed from there. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's meeting room at the Town Hall, <coughs> 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, January 15, 2015, at 7 p.m. on the petition of Carolyn A. Parker, who seeks a variance under section 6.3.3-6.2.5.E of the zoning bylaws in order to remove six manual pump toppers and to install six LED pump toppers with smart pay alternator on the property located at 303 Salem Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. 
testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you uh, may think you may want to speak tonight, please stand, raise your right hand, and I'll swear you're in. Uh, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. Thank you. The floor is yours if you'd like to uh, give us a, an oversight of uh, what you plan. Yep. My name is Carolyn Parker. I'm here representing Cumberland Farms. Um, Cumberland Farms has started what they call a Smart Pay program. The Smart Pay program allows um, customers, if they are a member, to get 10 cents off a gallon of gas. Um, the two ways that Cumberland Farms normally, you know, wishes to advertise for the Smart Pay is one through their main pylon sign, where if it was LED, that they would put this alternator strip in and the prices would alternate. Um, the standard is eight seconds. This particular site has what we call a scroller price sign. The scroller price sign is more of a mechanical sign. Um, it's not LED, it's not you know, lit up like an LED sign. Um, the other way that they want to advertise is through the pump toppers. The pump toppers are the prices that are on the dispenser. They're a requirement by the um, state of Massachusetts, you know, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, they are not required to be LED. Um, they are currently manual. Um, but what Cumberland Farms would like to do is to change out the manual pump toppers, install LED pump toppers, and then incorporate the Smart Pay program into the pump toppers. Um, the setting, as I mentioned, it, the standard setting that Cumberland Farms has been using is eight seconds. The setting can be um, changed from zero to 60 seconds. Um, the pump toppers are mainly for the customer at the pump. They are not meant to be seen from the roadway. Um, the standard brightness or setting for pump toppers and for all their LED signs is a six. So if 10 is the brightest, a six is kind of halfway. We can reduce the setting down to two. If we go below two, the bulbs will just burn themselves out and they'd be constantly having to change the bulb. And what happens when it reduces is the bulb gets smaller, so therefore the brightness isn't as bright. We also, um, since I've been doing these for about a year and a half now, and um, basically down to the last 40 or 50 locations that require me to go to a hearing, I'm learning a lot, um, especially from towns that do not appreciate or want the LED signs. Um, and I have gotten some approvals from towns that normally wouldn't approve LED. What we've come up with is that on the pump topper, we also can put a layer of film on the pump topper, which will also diminish the brightness once again. Um, so, you know, we have been trying to work with towns and learning as we go um, to, you know, make things safe. I do have um, a video if someone, I don't know, are you familiar with the, with the Smart Pay and the pump toppers? I uh, took a look at the brand new station over at the head of Park Power. You have them there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, do you, you know, do you have feelings or do you have any you know, comments? I do have a video if someone's not familiar with it, if you'd like to see it. Uh, I'm comfortable. Yeah. You know, and I'm as concerned. I mentioned, um, they're not close to the roadway right now. Currently, in order to change the prices, which they're, at least they're going in the right direction, right? <laughs> when, I, when, I'm, when it's 379, I got to come in front of you guys. It's not as easy. But, um, so when we have to change the pump toppers right now, um, they have to put cones on the lanes, they have to shut the lanes down, then the people have to go out and manually change the prices. Currently they can change the prices on the canopy from within the building. We're just looking to be able to um, do the same with the pump toppers. You know, weather like this, icy weather, you know, cold weather, um, the people have to go out there and still, you know, change the things. And Cumberland Farms has said there have been reported injuries from some people getting hit or whatever. So, um, you know, it is new technology. The reason we don't propose a scroller for this is because the mechanism is just too large to be incorporated into such a small pump topper. They are going to remain the same exact size as what's currently there. Um, the electricity is taken off of the pump, you know, to install them. You know, they are a benefit to the public to tell them of the lower prices. You know, it gets them to say, why is this changing? They go in the store, they become a member. Um, 
I was just in Cranston, Rhode Island, and it was 2.05. I was like, whoa, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which is pretty good. So I don't, um, if you have any questions, and you can answer anything for me. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of clarifications for you on, on the posting. Um, you had uh, sought a variance under six, section 6.3.3. Um, that's under the current bylaws. So 6.3.3 is, uh, is basically a... Uh, 6.2.3. Hmm. I have 6.2.3. You said it was on number of signs allowed. Oh, on mine it looks like 6.3.3. On the legal notice that we were provided in the mail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a typo. Oh, yeah, it's uh, a typo. Okay. Right. It, on the, I'm looking for the application. The application says 623 <laughs> and 625E. Yeah. Okay. That's, I that's, assume that, that's from my letter. And it, yeah, and I'm looking at the Glenn's and I letter, too. So okay. okay. It's consistent. So we assume that it's 623. Okay. And, you that's, know, no, normally when they were manual or are manual, they were just a requirement from the state. They were never considered a sign once you want to light them up. You know, that's why we go, we're going through the proper, you know, process yeah. to have them be reviewed, get denied, and then we'll come and see what everybody has yeah. to say. Yeah. Until I had one of the question of clarification. Okay. okay. Under uh, the other uh, relief you saw was a variance under 6.2.5.E. Um, I was wondering if you were aware of the um, section 6.2.6.4.1. Um, which specifies for business B districts, there is a procedure that one must follow. Um, and under the, well, I mean, 6246.41. I, I can only file what yeah. I denied by, so I don't know what the, no. what the question well, is. Well, that's, in that, it, it specifies it's a certificate of appropriate, appropriateness to Community Planning and Development Commission, and it specifies that in um, business B districts um, that you must uh, first apply to CPDC for an appropriate certificate uh, before you move to the building inspector. Uh, they have 45 days to review this. After the 45 days, uh, you can then go <clears throat> within a 20-day period if they deny you deny you uh, and then it goes to the Board of Selectmen um, so it's a different process I didn't know if um, somehow this got diverted or or what's what, what but what section is that John? Six, six two six four one page 131 on the old, old bylaw is that something that can be done after uh, we'll, 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 we'll discuss it with uh, mm -hmm. the building inspector here right now, the zone code enforcement yeah. officer, and see which route we're going here. Uh, in, the ap in, in the application for the permit, I mean, it is identified in here on one of the pages that you have to submit to the CPTC yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. before you go to the building inspector. Right. I mean, it's clearly written in the, in the, in the well, application. Well, I, 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 as I was reviewing that, I just got down, I was mm -hmm. about to pass that, and I picked that up. and. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if somehow we um, kind of averted the process. Or, pardon me? You, in, in the package that you prepared. Not offhand. Uh, right now. Under, under that section, 62641. Okay. First sentence. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, no, we'll, we'll say here. Now, I, I know that what you're talking about applies to basically um, service stations, gas stations. And normally, if it weren't in a, B, um, a, a business B zone, it, I mean, you wouldn't probably be talking about this particular section. But this particular section applies in business B zoning districts. Why in, why this applies in business B zoning districts, I have no and idea. Not others, yeah. I came and asked about that this afternoon to hmm. Jesse and... Yeah. Um, she she mentioned that uh, she didn't know what it was either. Yeah. But the intention was that Zach was not going to was yeah. not going to tackle 
signed bylaws under and no overlay be tackling it in November. Um, well, obviously, Glenn has worked with this for a number of years. Yeah, uh, so Glenn, you might have some comments on this uh, procedure? Yeah, um, I overlooked this section of the bylaw for this particular application, but so, but they, the CPTC can't issue them a variance. They can no. be approved <coughs> the design. So technically, she needs she needs the relief from ZBA, but before she can actually do that sign, she'd have to get that design approved with CPDC, and then they'll talk about the film or the brightness. Yeah, yeah. If they're concerned with it. And, mm -hmm. and evidently, this is what John's talking about. So, then we need the letter from CPDC in regards to the appropriateness. Right. The letter I mean, of I appropriateness. Think, I think that the application for the number of signs that's not allowed could be approved. Yeah. But she can't. Yeah. They can't actually. I can't actually issue the permit until we go through this certificate. Certificate of appropriateness. Right. I apologize that I missed that because um, yeah. no one told me I. Sure. Did it no, 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 no. And otherwise, I would have got a mouth to them. Un understandable. Okay. Well, I, I should have told you that. Yeah. <laughs> understandable. You're so, uh, a busy guy. I know when but, I drop the application. So we're off. telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and so I still don't think. Honest, it, I don't think it's a waste of. No. She needs both. Yeah. If 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 the sign application complied, she'd have to go to the CPDC to get permission for the appropriateness. But they can't go to CPDC for a variance. No, no, she would have to come back here after Correct. she gets through. And that, I think that's what basically what the bylaw is saying. Right. That's the procedure so, to go through. So were uh, we to act favorably on the application for a variance, it would have to be conditioned upon Correct. CPDC Correct. approval. Mm -hmm. We could do that, yeah. But once the variance is granted, that's it becomes part of the record mm -hmm. and it attaches to the property. So let's presume let's presume that we that we act favorably on the application for a variance regarding relief from the number of sign limitation. Yeah. Are we then not going to act on the LED portion? Well, I think that I didn't bring that portion of it up now because my question was, what do we do with this aspect of it before we move forward? Right. I had some questions on the other aspect of it for the variance, mm -hmm. but first I think we need to determine what the direction is that we move um, so that's I guess what I'm asking um, how does the board want to move forward on, on this no. because the letter of appropriateness um, has sequential options if uh, they do not well it's not that they're not going to rule on it in the 45 day period but uh, the other thing is if they, they say no that it goes to the board of selectmen for an overruling for the appropriateness, then it comes back to the, this board for the various aspect of it. Right, um, whereas if we do it the other way around, the variance attaches while it's going through the CPDC and perhaps board of selectmen process, and the variance somebody, attaches because the appeal period runs. Right. No matter how we condition it at that point in time, the, the, the variance attaches. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, so, I'm, I was going to give them this whole same package. So I just needed seven more copies, which I didn't know I needed. And a, and a certificate from the CPDC, whether or not they wanted to have a hearing on that is, is, is up to them. entirely up to them. So uh, but they could do a limited review if they so chose, and then just the, notify us. I don't, I don't know what the, what is that anyway? What, what are they? The planning commission? Planning commission. It's planning, oh, it's the planning, planning board. <laughs> That, that's what we All call right. it in Reading. CPDC okay. is the planning board. <laughs> like, that sounds so technical. <laughs> I, yeah, planning board. I, I, you know, I've gone to planning board yeah. and zoning board, and yeah. sometimes the planning board wants to know what the zoning board thinks prior to me going there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we do it the other way around. Yeah. In this particular case, it's, it's the, the other, other way, way around. around. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. So I, I just had a quick question, David, and maybe Glenn knows too, mm -hmm. but obviously I haven't seen the new bylaws. I don't know. Will the new bylaws revamp the signage? And obviously, electronic signage is is much more mm -hmm. uh, in use now than it was when the bylaws were originally done uh, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. The uh, proposed revisions that I believe are still under revision. 
okay. to the portion of the zoning bylaw rewrite that's scheduled for the special April town meeting. Okay, so th this is a, this uh, isn't anything to do with what's before the attorney general right now. Correct. The signing, so the, it's still the old signing. The process was bifurcated. Only half of the right. zoning bylaw rewrite went okay. before the November town meeting. Yeah. None of the article, none of the articles before okay. November town meeting spoke to signs. Sure. They were tabled for April's town meeting. So the along with parking uh, and a couple of others. Any any uh, changes to the signing bylaw will be coming up at the uh, April town meeting. And again, that would be approved, and then you have to go to the selection, correct? Office. And then the attorney general's office. Uh, so we're talking a uh, summer yeah. before anything. Uh, Presuming it passes that town yeah. meeting. If it passes, right. Okay, so thank are you. you. Are you proposing to allow it? Um, what certain signs? I, I know there was some discussion related to LED signage. Uh, I know that town council was very interested in the section on signage and the proposed changes. Um, so I don't, I can't answer your question definitively whether or not the proposal was to allow LED uh, signage, but I know there was some discussion. I don't know, I don't know that the proposal that will ultimately be vetted by town council for presentation in April will include a section on LED. And I apologize, like, Normally, you'd have two different applications that you would get. <laughs> so I yeah. must have just read right by them. No, no, I, I, no it's understandable. It seems yeah. like there was some information left out on, right. on both right. sides here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it, it looks like I don't know what the, uh, the thoughts are on the board here. Uh, it looks like there's one option. We, we Certainly, we could act tonight, as you mentioned, David, and uh, uh, put a... Uh, Amendment to the decision, hey, but the, there is a, there's a problem to but that. There's that a problem to that. Mm -hmm. Number two, the clock starts running. We could uh, uh, re ask if the applicant is open to a continuation, but then the continuation may run beyond. What do we have? Sixty days to render a decision on this uh, from from tonight. Or number two, you yeah. could withdraw without prejudice and then resubmit a whole new application when you're ready. But know when the planning board meets because obviously I don't need to do a butters for that and I have the package already done it's just a matter of getting them copies mm. you know, they, they may not out. even need to right. meet I, I think the thing for you to do is if you decide that we, we could continue this then and get, they, their, get yeah. their comments and, and come, they come down and speak to I would guess it would be the town planner yeah that was where or I Jesse. would start and yeah. or Jesse Wilson. Jesse yeah or Jean. And, and explain your. Uh, so it might be a matter of just sending him a scanned bunch, and he send it off to the people. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it could be. It, it could. It could be that. It could be. Could that be as simple as that. Uncomplicated. When is the next zoning board meeting? I just asked. Uh, uh, planning board, a zoning we'll board meeting. Uh, if I continued it. Uh, February the fifth. Let's see. We have. Yeah. February open. Pretty much. Uh, Sorry, I'm filling up the No, we're the only. I know you said you were free. February 5th and February 19th. February 5th might be a little early, but the 19th you could maybe continue no, to. I, I, if I don't have to have a hearing, I mean, then I can right. just tell you that I have to have a hearing. Right. Well, we don't know that, so I mean, right. we have to uh, move it to I a already, date yeah, certain. I know, I already am. Um, right. I'm just doing a lot of hearings. And, and actually, I, I don't know. If you know, I and I, I think down. knowing the flavor of this board, to, to be honest with you, I don't see a big issue with this change. The pump signs are staying the same size. You have pump signs there now. I know they're going to LED. The pumps all over the place do LED now. Right. But as you said, this is something you can explain to uh, the planning board in regards to intensity of the lighting, etc. How many people have to approve me? Three or? At the planning now, board? If I, if I didn't continue? Oh, uh, for a variance? Four. It would have to be four. Supermajority. Yeah. Four out of the five that are voting tonight. I don't, you know, I, and I, mean, you know, I, I can't wanna, speak I for everybody get else. I when I can do yeah. one other step and get right. continued. I, I'm thinking that um, I, I, I don't have a hearing on the fifth. 
Uh, I would say the fifth might be. You you could do it the fifth, and I, then, and I then if you if you can't one. make it, you send a letter. I'm doing so, like two or three anyway. Yeah, if, if you if you decided <laughs> to do the fifth, which is about what three weeks from tonight, right? Uh, and you couldn't do it, you could ask. I could just you could send a letter that, saying. Send a letter saying yes, I need to be. On yeah, we need more time. We can't do it. Can we reassign the case and to February nineteenth or to March? Yeah, the first right. first and, Thursday in March. And, and if you find that it gets too complicated and you start running up against our timelines you could always send in a notice of withdrawal without prejudice if, if you get stuck somewhere I don't I anticipate I that I being. believe we've done it before too David the applicant request can request an extension of the 60-day period can she not John mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, um, like I was yeah. just in Tewksbury, and, and they yeah. write a letter to me. Yeah. And they as long as it's the applicant that requests yeah. that sixty-day extent or that extension from sixty yeah, days. Yeah, I suppose that. Yeah, we done. Yeah, that could be done too. Could be. Okay. Well, um, I, in talking to Jesse this afternoon, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of other things that she mentioned. Now, I don't know. I I don't think there's any major decisions that's cast in stone, but I understood that the. Uh, that for the April town meeting, they're, they're, they, I can't tell you who they is because they don't know who they is, uh, are reconsidering whether they will go forward on um, signed bylaw changes at all. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one question. We have a Zach meeting on the 28th of January where I think so you will some of that. that is Jesse the town planner? Uh, she's the like assistant. Staff, yeah, staff yeah. planner. Oh, she, she got a long <laughs> fight after her, after her game. She's the go-to person. Yeah, she's forgotten more about this stuff than we know. So, so, so it sounds like right now, yeah, not even mm -hmm. you know the April meeting for new signed bylaws or yeah, and I know that's so so yeah. on that anyway. Yeah. Well, right, and um. I have other other towns that they're sure. like, oh, in six months we're going to change on. Well, and then it's been I, I've been doing this since last April. Yeah. As far as the smart pay, yeah. so um, you know, we're well, down we to know. The it takes it's a process. Say, so. It takes time sometimes, especially when you have to have various boards and meetings, town meetings, mm -hmm. to approve things. You know, I'm trying to make um, that easier, by the way, <laughs> as part of the revision. So I'd like to be rewrite. continued to February fifth because in my brain I don't. Have a hearing that night. And if it becomes that an issue, change, yeah, I'll just write a letter. Let's see. We have yeah, February fifth or February nineteenth. You would like to continue to February fifth? Yes. Okay. And I'll check when I get home. I should bring that with me. Sure. I just have to make yeah, and, and typically this board meets the first and third Thursdays of every month. There's no guarantees. So we have the 5th of February and the 19th of February uh, for our two meetings of February. Uh, okay, so we, we have a request in front of us now from the applicant uh, for a continuation of her case to February 5th. Uh, do I hear a motion a on that? Tony's got a question. What do you got, Tony? Oh, okay, I'll open it up for public comment. Name and address, please. Thank you. Uh, Tony Durazo, 130 John Street. Okay. I apologize for being late. Were there any mention of whether these new LED signs would actually have uh, commercials with sound? I, I, I believe in her presentation she mentioned that they would not. No. Okay. They, they just would be prices, <coughs> she says. There's not enough room to put messages and well, no. there are messages videos and stuff. Right now. Right. Right. She said that. Why you filling your tank. Right. That was in her presentation, and, and to be honest with you, Tony, we did not get into, board mm -hmm. members did not get into the technical aspects of it. We've been going through the procedures in regards to the application on this. And video. That's all right. I've seen them at other uh, local yeah. stations. So, I, so I, I think the, uh, I think the uh, board might want to remind the applicant of the town bylaw referring to a loudspeakers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So he, what, what he might be talking about is the dispenser itself. Yes. The dispenser's probably talking to them. And um, 
Oh, we've had dispenses that they give commercials mm -hmm. over it, play music, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Is yeah. that what you're that, talking? That's just the way the dispenses are coming. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, if this is going to be determined on that, we'll shut them off. But they have the screen yeah. has to be there because it's communicating with the yeah. person at the pump yeah. in the store. Well, I think this is where you will get your direction from CPDC when you go there in regards to. The, the brightness of the LEDs uh, in regards to sounds, volumes, loudspeakers. I didn't see any mention of it in your application that there would be that. I, yeah, I wouldn't and, even know uh, to bring it up. I was under the impression reading the application here that it would just be a change from printed signage to LED signage right. in regards to <coughs> gasoline prices, period. <coughs> but. That's what we would need then is a, uh, a letter of appropriateness from CPDC. Sorry, I didn't. Or that. I don't know why you must have just stopped reading. <laughs> or CPDC gives uh, the town staff planner the I ability to write a letter, and you know we would, I believe, accept that too. I would accept that too. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's it, Tony. I'll close the public hearing then. And it sounds like then she is going to be going to CPDC and having to get something there, or she'll be talking to the town planner in regards to that. And we need a letter of appropriateness from CPDC in regards to what moving, she is moving forward on the variance aspect. Of yeah, it. yeah, we haven't even we haven't we, even discussed that. We know the merits no. of the variance. Yeah, right. We want to make sure you get your yeah. Okay. Oh, we have to talk about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we, so we uh, do we need. What do we need to do to approve the continuance? Have we? Just a, uh, I think we need a motion, a motion and a second. Yep. Okay. Uh, motion to al allow the continuance of case 1502 to February 5th, pending CPDC. For, okay. For the purpose of? Pe yeah. Pe for the purpose of allowing the applicant to seek a certificate of appropriateness from the CPDC. Do I hear, second. hear a second from Mr. Dream or a second? Uh, all those in favor of the motion? Okay, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you back here February 5th then. Yeah. We'll go Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you. Planning board is now meeting twice a week, I understand. News to me. That's what Jesse told me today, too. I was okay. surprised to hear that. Yeah. Um. I don't know if there's a calendar. Mm. I don't know what days are meeting, though. I, should, I, didn't, I didn't bother asking. I mean, I just was well, concerned. I mean, I know they submitted the, well, we'll get to it, the Zach stuff. Yeah. Mr. Redfern, what would you like to do next? I believe we have some uh, minutes to yes. review tonight. And Thank I you. think that Thank will you. pretty much take care of business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch out for those. Uh, yeah, watch out for the traffic <laughs> jam tomorrow. Yeah. You see him on the TV? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glad to help you. Unique way of uh, getting themselves oh, uh, put a sign hooked on together. It, <laughs> well, well, sure you know, it certainly <laughs> looked like it was well planned. Yeah. You know, they had to really move ready. Okay. Yeah. Except the uh, down in Medford, they uh, had planned uh, to allow the uh, the uh, uh, the quick lane uh, to pass. Except the traffic backed up so far that the ambulance that was trying to get an individual down there couldn't Could even get to the oh, I the yeah. third lane. The third lane. Yeah. Oh, that, that. That's awesome. So they had to reroute the ambulance. We just heard that in the news tonight. Oh. Wow. Had to take take the person to a. Uh, I thought the ambulance was coming up from the south, from Easton, and they had to reroute them back to Brockton mm -hmm. to that hospital. Well, I'm sorry, that was not in the 90. No, but they were still using the zipper lane and down there to get in. Right, the, the zipper lane, right. Wow. Yep. And they couldn't get to the they zipper lane. They couldn't use it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we have some, uh, we have a final draft of the uh, ZBA meeting uh, minutes from uh, December 4th, 2014. 
Uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to review those. I know I did and sent some comments into uh, Maureen on that. As did I. And Will held and da 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 da. I'll just make a quick check here that the system back in a cool requirement. Future accessibility up here. Oh, yeah. We, I think one I saw that uh, had a lot, a couple of the votes were uh, Eric instead of Kathleen there. They had yeah, uh, Hagstrom mm -hmm. instead of Hackett, and I changed, I asked, I picked up on that and changed it. Looks like she caught that, and then the nimble, and the, yeah. So it looks like my comments have been taken care of there. Mine too. David's too. Uh, anybody else have any comment? I only no, found one. Okay. On page, uh, let's see, one. Sorry? second page. Yeah. One, two, three, fourth paragraph. Refers to Miss Taylor as him. I think it's Mr. Taylor. Ms. Taylor, it says as him. Yeah. yeah. So, so it should be a Mr. instead of Ms. I don't know. I don't recall. I think, I think it was. Huh? It was a girl. It was a girl? Then it should be her then. Yeah. I couldn't remember whether it was a guy or a girl. So did the person. Okay. okay. I, I couldn't remember who it was that made the comment. Okay, so it should stand as it is. Uh, no, I the last last word should, last be, her. Her. should be her. Yeah. Oh, instead of him. Yeah, I got that. Okay, neighborhood to him instead of. Her. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, I will. Uh, Anybody want to entertain a motion to accept those minutes? I'll make a motion to uh, accept those minutes as modified. Okay, do I have a second? Second. second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? 500. Zero, zero. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't believe we have any other business on the uh, agenda tonight. And uh, I would accept, <coughs> accept a motion to adjourn. Second report. Was that on the agenda? Oh, well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Zach report. Yes. Uh, we'll make it short. Okay. The, 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 the Zach's <laughs> charter <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Zach's charter expires on February 28th. We have scheduled one meeting, I think a final meeting, on January 28th uh, with all the members of the Zach to go over uh, what future plans lie ahead for the zoning bylaw rewrite, perhaps even an update on the status of the Attorney General's approval of the currently approved amended zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the Attorney General already approved the historic district. The historic district came by uh, real quick. And I think they submitted that separately to get yeah. it done more quickly rather than do it as a right. uh, package. We well, just indicated uh, this afternoon that they've accepted the, uh, <coughs> the Attorney General has accepted everything that was done in September which includes the marijuana, uh, the changes in the overlay districts for the, the wetlands, everything that you proposed during September. Right, but I also understand that the Attorney General's approved the historic district that, On was, top of that. Yes. was proposed and approved at town meeting in November, the beginning of the November ah, town okay. meeting. So uh, I understand that. that that might yeah, have been. Yeah, it's been published in the paper that it was accepted. And yeah. yeah, but the zoning bylaw rewrite has yet to be accepted by the Attorney General. So maybe we'll get some insight on that. Other than that, we'll see what the town has in store for the zoning bylaw rewrite come April. Okay. Thank you, David. Sure. Uh, any other business? If not, I would uh, accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved, do I have a second? Second from David. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you so much. Thank you.